Hey everybody, it's One Cast One Fish, and today we're going to be discussing compressed high intensity radar pulse, also known as chirp for short. In today's video, we're going to discuss what chirp sonar is, how it compares to traditional sonar, and how Garmin's been able to integrate chirp sonar into the Striker Series fish finders. Traditional single frequency sonar transmits a powerful ping or pulse of energy into the water column at a specific frequency. It then listens for those echoes to return, then the unit software processes this information to create the image of the bottom, structure, and fish that you see on your sonar display screen. What makes chirp sonar so different is the ability of the transducer to put out multiple frequencies. This results in more sonar pings and in return more echoes returning back to the unit. And due to the transducer's ability to transmit many different frequencies, you get that awesome clarity and target separation that Chirp Sonar is known for. Simply put, with Chirp Sonar, you're putting way more energy into the water column, which results in getting more information back to your fish finder and ultimately displayed on your screen. With the base Garmin Striker 4 transducer, you get four options for frequency selection. 77,000 hertz, 200,000 hertz, 77,000 hertz chirp and 200,000 hertz chirp. With the 77k hertz and 200k hertz frequency selection, you get one frequency being transmitted through the water at a time. When you're only producing one single frequency, it's hard to saturate the water column with energy, which in return means less information is returned to your sonar unit and ultimately on your display screen. Now let's move over to the 77k hertz chirp and 200 kHz chirp frequency selection. We already learned that with chirp sonar, we're using multiple frequencies to saturate the water column. This in return increases our return clarity and target separation when it shows on our sonar screen. But how much extra frequency saturation are you really getting with the Garmin Striker 4 standard transducer? With the standard transducer it's supplied with your Garmin Striker 4, you're getting plus and minus 5,000 hertz, which means with the 77,000 hertz chirp selection, you're getting frequencies that range from about 72,000 hertz to 82,000 hertz. And with the 200,000 hertz chirp selection, you'll get roughly 195,000 hertz to 205,000 hertz. As you can see from the comparison, you're definitely putting more energy into the water column over using the single frequency, which is going to give you better returns and a whole lot more clarity and target separation on your sonar screen. Now we're going to head on over to the Garmin website where we'll find that in addition to the standard transducer supplied with your Garmin Striker, you have two additional chirp transducer options that can be purchased for an additional cost, the GT8 and the GT15. So why does Garmin have these extra transducer options and are they worth it? Let's take a look. The GT8 is a high wide chirp transducer that's going to set you back about $150. The GT8 transducer is perfect for shallow water fishermen due to its 24 degree beam angle which provides greater area coverage in the water. Due to this wider beam it has a max depth of about 800 feet which is more than enough for most fishermen. The GT8 emits a frequency range of 145,000 Hz to 230,000 Hz. That's a band of almost 85,000 Hz. That's a lot of energy being put into the water column, which in turn is going to give you a crystal clear image and excellent target separation, which would be expected with higher end chirp sonar. Moving on to the GT15, which is a mid chirp transducer, it's going to set you back about $200. This is a great option for those that need that crystal clear image and excellent target separation, but are going to find themselves in deeper water. The GT15 has the ability to be used in depths up to 1900 feet. The GT15 emits a frequency range of 85,000 hertz to 165,000 hertz. That's an entire band of 80,000 hertz. And since the GT15 operates at lower frequency ranges, it's ideal for those deeper waters where image clarity and target separation are a high priority. The one thing I do want to point out though is that if you choose to upgrade your transducer to the GT8 or GT15, they're both 8 pin transducer connections. This means you'll need the 8 to 4 pin connection adapter from the Garmin website to use them with your Striker Fish Finder. As you can see there's quite a bit of difference in the amount of energy being transmitted through the water column 
between our standard transducer single and chirp frequency options. And an even bigger difference when using a dedicated chirp transducer such as the GT8 or the GT15. You can use the following matrix to give you an easy reference guide to view the differences between the cost, max depth, frequency range, beam coverage, image clarity, and target separation of each transducer and frequency selection. Now as always, feel free to ask any questions down below. Be sure to like, comment, and share with all your friends. And we'll see you next time on The Walk.